So today our guest is Will Tao, the founder of Tao Properties. Will is the director of commercial real estate division at Collective Realty and the owner of Tao Properties, a property management and real estate investment company. Um, Tao Properties currently manages nearly 200 units throughout greater Los Angeles. So to kind of just kick things off, Will, tell us about, you know, yourself as well as how TL Properties came about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you, John and Milan, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, been, been a big fan of Brickwork for a while, so, and, and a user as well. So, so thanks for having me. Um, so a little bit about my background. Um, so, uh, Gosh, where do I begin? So my my family's uh, well, my my parents are originally from Taiwan, and my dad was a college professor at Kansas State University in Manhattan, Kansas, and uh, so also known as the Little Apple. And um, my dad, you know, while he was still a professor, he started to um, kind of uh, get interested in apartments. He started to kind of. Uh, invest in and then start managing small apartment buildings near campus, thinking student housing. And um, he eventually got so involved in that, he ended up having hundreds and hundreds of units that um, he uh, at first was managing for other people and then eventually started, you know, buying and investing in more. And, uh, and so I kind of grew up in the business mm. uh, of, of kind of real estate investing and management in particular. Um, I had a totally different career. I, um, I have a bachelor's and master's in international relations. Uh, I was actually trained to be more of a diplomat. Mm. So, um, and I worked in, uh, I worked on and off in DC, Washington DC for about 10 years. I worked both in the Clinton administration and the uh, George W. Bush administration. Um, and, uh, my last position was as an international economist and I was on the team that used to negotiate international trade agreements. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I realized that I wasn't a very good bureaucrat. <laughs> <laughs> I tried my best, but I'm yeah. not, I'm not a good kind of like <laughs> cubicle person. So, um, so, um, I had started experimenting just on the side as a hobby. I had started acting on the side just for fun. Oh. And, um, and I kind of like, it just kind of took off without me even really trying. Like first it was a play, then it was a national commercial, then it was a TV show, then it was a movie. And wow. I just like, I started going up to New York and uh, got an agent up there. And then I eventually, eventually brought me out here. And, um, and it was just the time in my life where it felt like a good time for a career switch. So I did. Um, but so when I moved out here, that was 20 years ago now, mm. uh, like it was this, this, like 20 years ago, exactly. And the first thing I did when I got out here was kind of my real estate like side kind of kicked in. <laughs> so I, I co-owned a building uh, with my family in Kansas wow. and um, my family, you know, my dad calls me up. He's like, Hey, we got an offer on, on our building. Are you interested in doing a 1031 exchange. And at that point I had never done a 1031 exchange. I didn't know what it was. Mm. Um, and so, um, so I, I was, I was like, yeah, sure. What is it? How do we do it? <laughs> and so I, I walked through that whole process and, um, I remember I was like the worst client. I had two real estate agents. <laughs> I had one from, uh, Echo Park to West Hollywood, another from Beverly Hills of Santa Monica. Oh. And I canvassed, the city like back and forth i looked at over 200 buildings wow, wow. and um i ended up <laughs> ironically buying the very first building i saw <laughs> which was <laughs> a fourplex in los Feliz. and goodbye. Um, yeah it ended up being a goodbye for us you know um it was also a good time you mm -hmm. know at mm -hmm. that time like 0203 like oh it yeah. was starting That's to blow up, back up yeah right mm -hmm. And I always like to use this example. So, okay, so in Kansas, I started with 12 units, mm. okay? It was, it was mm. a new bill of 12 mm. units. Mm. Um, and then I exchanged those 12 units and I bought four units here mm. in California. Mm. Two years later, I got an, we got an offer we couldn't refuse. So we ended up selling that fourplex and then going back to Kansas. So- Oh, wow. Okay, apples, apples to apples, 12 units <laughs> in Kansas, <laughs> Four units in California, four units in California, two years later, 
Guess how many I bought in Kansas? Uh, 12? And we're like double Keep that? Going. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. 24? Keep going. Keep going. Oh. Keep going. Oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> 100? Can we that? <laughs> we bought 54 units. Oh my God. Oh my from God. From the original. So, so obviously if I just kept my 12 units, right? Like I'd yeah. still be at 12. Yeah. But by bringing it to California Darn. and then using that kind of, you know, raw, you know, the, the type of appreciation we get here is just, you know, not, okay. not like anywhere else in the country. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back to Kansas and I four and a half times what I had. Previously. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, so that, that taught me a big lesson, mm. right? Mm. About what this market can do, yeah. you know, if you're able to kind of go back and forth uh, from both in-state and out-of-state and depending on what you're looking for, whether you're looking for cash flow or you're looking for appreciation, you know, those are oftentimes the trade-offs. So, um, and and I worked, you know, during that entire time, I was, I was working in the film business and I I, I worked on that side. Mm -hmm. And then um, after after the, the weight crash and everything um, in 2011, uh, 2012, uh, my then, uh, my then fiance now, now wife and partner, uh, we decided to get our real estate licenses. And, um, because I already had this kind of background in investing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, you know, we ended up getting our licenses. Uh, we, we had bought a house on the East side of Los Angeles and, you know, um, and just started immediately got into multifamily just because of my background. And we started buying, primarily for investors, a lot of whom were not in Los Angeles and who needed someone to manage their properties. So uh, we, we fell into that niche very quickly. And, um, and so now that's, that's our, what we're known for. So we have three parts to our company. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the main broker. I mostly do um, uh, sales. Uh, so listing and, and purchases of multifamily and mixed use properties. Um, we have a management side that my wife runs and we have over 200 units now that we manage. Mm. And then, um, we're also investors and developers ourselves. Um, so, um, so it's, it's three parts of the business, obviously each side kind of, you know, takes care of the other. Yeah, that's, um, fascinating and, um, unique too. I didn't see a lot of people out there. Um, you know, obviously they're kind of focused on one piece or aspect of that. Yes. Business. The fact that you have all three is uh, fascinating. I think it gives weight to kind of advice that you or uh, consult, right? So if someone comes to you and brand new and they have those atypical questions, should I buy a multifamily? How do I even manage it? You could just kind of open up the blueprint of what you're currently doing. We, we are like one of the few all-in-one yeah. um, companies. Like you said, most people either focus on brokerage or focus on management or focus on development. Like those right. are right. three very distinct, you know, areas of real estate. Um, but, you know, just because of it's, it's it, and it was truly just organic for us. It just kind of evolved this way. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. We primarily work with, frankly, you know, kind of mom and pop investors, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people who own anywhere from one unit to, you know, could be 70 or plus units, whatever it is, but through several buildings. And uh, we tend to get a lot of those types of clients mm -hmm. and people who are looking to kind of build and then eventually obviously retire, hopefully on, on, on their, on their portfolio. Okay. So I kind of wanted to go into this question with you, um, you know, uh, just to preface, uh, we first met at the uh, area event uh, in downtown. And uh, I was so excited when I got that invite, because obviously with COVID, that was my first in-person. In person, right? Yeah, <laughs> so a lot of people, I think you guys had, uh, like, area had an event one prior to that one, but I didn't know about that one. So this one in downtown by multifamily, I was like, ah, I, got, I have to go. But for those of you who don't know, ARIA stands for Asian American Real Estate Association. Yes. So ARIA, yes. And, and they have local chapters everywhere. Uh, that's the LA All chapter. the country. Yep, yep, yep. And that event particularly, um, it was fascinating. Uh, I, I absolutely, I, you're a natural great speaker and you drew me in when you were talking about tenants in common or ticks and kind of weighing those advantages and stuff but I think I want to kind of start off with that question because I think a lot of people in our audience whether they're commercial brokers or developers might not know about kind of the advantages of that kind of ownership. 